Everybody, welcome back to my channel. We have a fun little video today, and it's part of a larger series here on my channel known as DIYing Your DMs. Now, this is just a little series that I've done for quite a while now, probably like five or six episodes, I would say, where I basically take your guys' DMs that you send me over on Instagram and I grab inspo from them and try to recreate them for a much more affordable price point, or just to share with you guys tips and tricks in the whole tutorial on how to create the project from a start to finish. So that does mean if you are not already following me over on Instagram, definitely make sure to do so. It is Lone Fox Home. I'll put it on the screen right here for you guys. I post tons of home inspiration, photos that you guys definitely never see here on Instagram of my space, DIY projects. And today for you guys, I have four different projects and these projects turned out really, really amazing. I'm so obsessed with the outcome of them. And if you guys like DIY projects as well, make sure to subscribe to my channel as I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week here on Lone Fox. And the last little self promo before jumping in, you guys, I actually have a blog as well that I never talk about here on my YouTube channel, but it is a part of my website, Lone Fox. Com, and I just posted a blog post of a DIY antique inspired librarian cabinet over on the blog. You can see it right here. I'll put the link for that post below if you guys want to check it out, but definitely make sure to kind of tune in every now and then over on the blog to see and catch up on any posts you might have missed. But let's go ahead and jump on into our first project. Lone Fox family member Heidi Ordonez sent over a message saying, how about DIYing one of these wire sculptures? And she also sent along the inspo photo, of course, which I'll pop up right here for you guys. And basically these kind of look like metal objects, like decorative shelf decor or just things that you can kind of decorate your space with. And when I saw these, I was like, oh my gosh, like I think I'm able to create these. I actually have some really thick aluminum wire that is super easy to work with. And let me tell you guys right now, this project turned out incredible and it only cost a couple dollars for the supplies. So let's jump on in. The tools and supplies for our first project are super minimal. I'm just going to be using some aluminum wire and these wooden coasters I actually have from last Christmas. Now, the thing that I love about this wire is that it's super affordable. It's really malleable, so it's very easy to bend, but it also keeps its structure and it's really lightweight. So all around, everything about it is just amazing for pieces like this. I'm not a huge fan of it for jewelry use just because it seems very cheap. However, for projects and DIY decor and stuff, it's amazing to work with. So I started off by taking the thicker wire and I'm going to be kind of creating the border shape of the leaf and spell that she sent me. However, I'm going to go ahead and do the leaf on the right side because the leaf on the left just looked a little bit challenging. And there truly is no rhyme or reason to this at all. I just created the border shape and then once I reached the end of it, I just looped the wire around and then fastened it to the other side and then just pressed it shut just to hold it in place. And then you can cut off your extra wire, leaving about a six inch tail at the bottom. And next what I did was I wanted to add in the veining. This is like the most important part. So all you need to do to add this in is use a thinner gauge wire, wrap it a couple times around the border base and then wrap it around the bottom as well. This is to create the center line. And then I'm also going to go in and add a couple of little like spoke sections that come off the center and onto the sides. And I cannot just have one of these sculptures. I wanted to create a second one as well. And this one's much more of a simpler version. All I did was create your very typical generic kind of doodled leaf shape, the teardrop style, I guess you could say. And I looped it around again, closed off the bottom border, and then we're gonna add in the veining, which of course just adds all of the detail. So I added one right down the center, making sure to secure it to the top and bottom point. And then I also added a piece of wire to the center of the wire that we have that's running down the middle and then kind of branched it out to the left and right side and just wrapped it around to create this like more simple leaf style. Once our wire objects were done, I brought them over to a box and gave them a coat of the Farmhouse Matte Black Spray Paint by Rust-Oleum. This is my favorite black spray paint. It is so amazing. And her original inspo photo was actually black, so I went ahead and I gave these a generous coat of black spray paint. And then I also went in with my early American wood stain to stain the top of the coasters. I felt like I gave it a really nice depth and also a little bit of warmth as well. So I went ahead and just gave those a nice little staining. And then what I'm gonna do is use a drill bit to drill down the center of each of these coasters. That way we could stick our wire in and I have a little scrap piece here that I just made sure fit snugly inside of the base And then all you have to do is literally press those right inside of the hole You can add glue if you want to however, these were totally snug as is they're super lightweight So they're gonna stand up on their own as well and that finishes off these little wire sculptural objects
our next project was sent in by the name Nin Melhetti. I might be pronouncing that wrong, so I do apologize if I am doing so. She sent such an incredible inspo photo, and it was actually this photo here, which is DIY avocado ink without leaving home. And I was so intrigued when I saw this color on the screen. I was like, how exactly are we going to achieve this beautiful, like, burgundy, just like soft mauve color with avocados? And then I read the post, which I'll make sure to link the original pin below for you guys so you can check out the blog post as well that I kind of followed for this tutorial. And I'm gonna let you guys be the judge of how this project turned out, so let's jump on into it. Fun fact for you guys, I absolutely despise avocados. I do not like them, I never eat them ever, um, so that's kind of fun. However, my roommate loves them, so she saved the avocado pits for me, and I filled up a pot with some water about halfway full, and I'm gonna let that boil. But while that's boiling, I'm gonna share with you guys the technique for tie-dyeing these pieces. So I'm starting off with these simple little white IKEA cotton pillowcases. You're gonna wanna make sure that the material is 100% cotton. And for this one, I'm going to be folding it in half as I showed here, and then folding it in half one more time. Impossible to obtain in a Manolo recording. Once that's done, we're gonna fold that in half, and then once more, we're gonna fold that in half. So we have this small little square here. Now, what I'm gonna do with this little square is actually take some rubber bands and tightly fasten them into all of the four corners, um, and you can totally tie these around however you want. You could do them around the center if you want to. However, I thought for this one, it would be kind of fun to do it around the corners. So I went ahead and I added a couple of rubber bands to each of the corners to make sure they were nice and secure. I wanted to create two pillowcases, so for my next one, I just did an accordion fold on it, which this one actually turned out to be my favorite. I highly suggest trying out this method if you do create one of these. Now, I believe this kind of tie-dye is actually known as shibori. I'm not 100% sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. However, if you do want to search shibori tie-dye, um, this is a great way to kind of find a couple of techniques like the one I'm using. And I ended up wrapping rubber bands all the way down the middle, probably spaced out about three inches away from each other, and this is going to create our fun kind of tie-dye pattern. So once our water is brought to a boil, we're going to go ahead and drop in all of our avocado pits. And you're just going to carefully do this so of course the water doesn't splash back at you. And right after you drop all of those in, I also went ahead and soaked my pillowcases in water for the period that I'm going to be seeping the avocado pit. So this is after about 45 minutes, they're going to look similar to this. And then after about an hour, I ended up removing all of the avocado pits. Now there are going to be some skins and some pits. They honestly looked like brown eggs for some reason in the end. And I turned the heat off and I dropped in my pillowcases. And I'm actually going to let this steep in the water overnight. So I wanted to get a full on really deep, rich color. So I let them sit overnight in the water. And then in the morning time, I pulled them out and I snipped off the rubber bands. Now at the beginning, I mentioned to you guys how I really like the accordion fold one. And that is because the dye didn't really soak into this kind of folded pattern one. However, it ended up turning out really cute in the end. The accordion fold one though, really took the dye nicely and it created such a unique pattern, which I ended up loving. So all you have to do is wash the excess dye out, dry these in the dryer and you're good to go. You see stereophonic sound for the home is recorded on two separate tracks. Each one Next project is by Lone Fox family member Nicole Gutierrez, and she sent over these really, really unique ceramic bowls. And I have seen these all over Pinterest. I've even looked into purchasing one myself before. However, these typically are quite pricey, ranging from like $80 to $200, because these are actually very fragile. They're not as easy as your traditional bowl. So I do see why companies are charging more for these. And also they are all handmade. I was kind of staring at the photo, looking at all the options. And I was like, honestly, I'm going to try to recreate this just with your traditional Sculpey clay. And honestly, it turned out pretty darn good and I'm going to share with you guys how I did it. The supplies for this bowl are also super, super minimal. We're just gonna be using some clay and some water, so pretty easy. So I'm starting off by just kneading up my clay to make sure that it's nice and warm and malleable. And we're going to be rolling this out into a very, very long log section. That's going to be about half of an inch to three quarters of an inch thick. So I'm rolling this out here and I'm gonna be using this metal Ikea bowl as a base for my piece. So I flipped it over and I'm going to be adding my clay log, I guess you could say, to the largest section of the bowl and just 
kind of stippling the ends of them where they're going to meet together, adding a little bit of water and then mending them together with my fingers and smoothing out any imperfections and just making sure that it looks nice and neat in the end. So next what I'm going to be doing is wrapping a smaller circle here, which I'm going to be using for the top base of the bowl. So this small circle is going to be where the actual bowl sits on. So you're not going to want it to be too small, but also not too large. And now from here on out, this process is very repetitive. We're going to be using a toothpick just to score the end of the clay section and also the base of the clay section. And I'm going to be pressing them in together as you can see here, and then also attaching it to the bottom rim, which is of course going to be the top rim once we pull it off of the bowl. So I know that was kind of a lot of talking there guys, but I feel like it's a little bit of a simpler process if you actually just see what I am doing. It's very repetitive from here on out with scoring the clay and just attaching it to our small ring and then also attaching it to our large ring. Now you're going to want to pop this into the oven according to your clay's instructions and bake for about 30 to 45 minutes. And then once it was done, I literally let it cool for an hour and then I popped it off the bowl base. Super, super simple. And I'm using some folk art parchment paint, which is my current favorite color by them. And I'm mixing in just a little bit of baking soda to create a ceramic finish. This is going to thicken up your paint and just give it like a nice texture when we actually paint it on the piece and just make it look like an actual ceramic piece. So once I mix this up, I went ahead and I applied a generous coat of this to the entire bowl that we created, making sure to add even extra amounts of the paint in any section where we weren't able to smooth out our joints, which basically were the sections that were touching the bowl as we couldn't get underneath and smooth those out. So I added a lot of paint into those cracks just to kind of make it look as if they were one solid finished off piece. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint this entire piece with the paint. Hello from a new location for project number four. Um, they're actually doing insane construction outside of our apartment, like on the road, and it was so loud. So I was like, I'm just gonna head over to Marie's room to finish off this little intro section. So our fourth project was sent over by Noemi Blanchard. And she said, hi, I love your videos and your style. And first of all, thank you so much for that. She said, I wanna recreate this pendant light from Anthropology, but I don't know where to start. It would be amazing to see this project on your channel and I hope that you are inspired by it. And I definitely was. I actually went ahead and went over to Anthropology's website to see if this was still available. And it was quite pricey coming in at $248 and I personally felt like I can totally DIY this for sure and that is exactly what we're going to be doing so let me share with you guys the steps I took. I've had this lampshade in my stash for quite a while, so I ended up pulling it out, and I'm also going to be using two rolls of twine and a little bit of yarn as well. So what I started off by doing was adding a little bit of my Fabri-Tac adhesive to the outside of our lampshade, because we're going to be wrapping the entire lampshade in our jute rope. Now, I actually got this jute from Joann's, and I ended up using two full rolls of it, but the great thing is this is only $3 a roll, so not too much at all. And also keep in mind, guys, once you glue down your first couple of strands, you actually don't need to glue it down anymore at all, which I didn't realize at first. I was like, wow, I'm going to have to glue this entire piece, but I actually didn't need to because it was just secured in place on its own. So I went ahead and I wrapped this around the entire lampshade, which took me about 45 minutes, but it was definitely worth it. It's time to make all of the tassels. I basically grabbed my yarn and wrapped it around a three and a half inch piece of cardboard that I just cut out and I wrapped it around 25 times and then I'm going to cut an additional piece of yarn which I'm going to slip under all of those loops and tie in a double knot right at the top there which is going to be the top of the tassel. And then once you have that tied you're going to pull it off of your cardboard and then tie another piece of string around the top section to kind of create that top section of the tassel. I hope that makes sense to you guys. I've created these a hundred times on my channel in the past and you're going to snip off all the loops at the bottom and that finishes off your tassel however you are going to need a ton of these i think i used about 70 of them so it took me quite a while to create them but it is totally worth it so on the inside of your lampshade i thought it was just easiest to go ahead and hot glue these onto the inside as opposed to actually weaving them onto the front or like 
putting each one on a needle and thread and looping it through. However, if you really wanted to, you totally could. I ended up just hot gluing them all around the entire interior, making sure that I kind of evenly spaced them out as I went. Make sure to snip off all the tails once you're done and that finishes off your shade. All you have to do is add in your little lamp cord and you're good to go. And that guys finishes off today's video. I hope that you enjoyed this episode in my DIYing your DMs series. And if you have not already, definitely make sure to check out some of the other episodes. I will link them in the description box below for you. Um, they're all pretty fun and you guys always send me incredible ideas. And please, please, please do continue to do so over on Instagram. So if you are not already, make sure to follow me on Instagram. It is Lone Fox Home. I'll put it on the screen for you guys. You can send over your DIY ideas whenever you have them. And I love checking them out, screenshotting them and saving them for videos like this one. Now, of course, if you are not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel here on Lone Fox. It is 100% free and you get brand new home decor and DIY content every single week on Thursdays and Sundays. So there's going to be a new video coming up this Sunday as well. And I will probably just catch you guys all in that one. I don't want to keep you here for much longer. Thank you so much for watching and supporting and I will catch you in the next one, guys. Have an amazing rest of your day. Bye.